Okay, YouTube, just a quick shot of uh, installing the Raspberry Pi. So this is, I guess they call their hub board. So you have your HDMI and audio coming out there. And then you remove this little filler board here. And then I've uh, gone ahead and installed uh, an SD card. I, and then I guess this is held in place with two of the USB slots. So there's there's kind of a... I guess that's a dummy. Well, actually, I guess it is a real USB connector. There's a cable right there. So I guess that, that also runs the hub board. So you only get access to two of the USB ports plus the Ethernet. But that kind of holds it in place. That's kind of neat. You just put your four screws in. And then you bring this back over. So there's your AV plug and the HDMI. And then this is the little multi-tool, so there's a screwdriver on the end. And then you can also use this for accessing the SD card. There's a little slot right there. Yeah, so you've got the card in, and then this is their heat sink. And this also picks up the GPIO pins and then brings them over to this connector. Okay, I think that's in there. So this is your main connection here, gives you all the GPIO pins, and then this board picks up the HDMI and the audio. Yeah, so I want to show you how this uh, multi-tool works. So you, there's a little groove there, you slide that across, and then you can pull out your SD card really easy, and then it also works perfect for putting it back in, because you have to get it just the right height, so you get it most of the way in, slide your tool out of the way, pop the card in, and I've been letting this charge for a while, so let's see if it actually boots up here. I was getting like a low voltage symbol. So you got your power button. Let's see there. Ah, there we go. There we go. Looks like it's booting up. This touch screen as well? No, I guess not. Oh, and there's your touch pad. Yeah, let me pick a, get a Wi-Fi connection here and we'll continue. Okay, there we go. Checking for updates. Oh, there we go. 34% on batteries. Yeah, I think they must ship them a little bit discharged because I was getting the uh, low power, low voltage icon up there. Oh, there we go. Just takes a while to load, but yeah, looks like looks like the uh, networking works. So I didn't have to do wired Ethernet first, which I've had to do on the Open Elec Cody images. You have to usually boot them up with wired internet first, but yeah, this one worked wireless. Yeah, it looks like a pretty nice nice screen. The keyboard's decent layout, and but yeah, there we go. Got a Raspberry Pi laptop. Have it completely open. There's your Raspberry Pi. So over here you do have one of the USB ports. But yeah, I mean it's just amazing. You you look at a modern laptop and it's just full of stuff inside. And this one's empty. I mean this this is your whole processor. This is your kind of system board. And then you've got the battery underneath the keyboard. And you've got all this room inside for other things. I'll have to look at perhaps doing some sort of uh, SSD or something inside of here. I don't know what kind of options you have for putting something like that on there. You do have the one USB, so I guess you could put a flash drive on there. But you've also got your SD card, so I, I put a 32 gig high-speed card in there. First impressions are it's it's pretty good. I like the keyboard, you know, having the keyboard right there. You've got the screen, you know, decent resolution. And it's supposed to run eight to nine hours on the internal battery. So this would be actually a quite a usable laptop. Yeah, so the tricks were you have to plug this in and let it charge for a little bit right out of the box. It didn't seem to want to go through a boot cycle and I was getting the little lightning bolt low voltage icon up there, so I don't think it was quite able to put out full power, but now after charging about an hour, 
it's uh, 34% and it's still running. So let's see, I want to see how this one shuts down. That's the other thing. So if we go here to shut down, let's see what happens here. Yeah, so that one shuts down. In fact, let's open up and look inside here. Yep, see it powers off. So yeah, I, I like that. You can shut it down and it shuts down. Where this one, you shut it down and then you have to flip the power switch. It's like two-step operation where here, here that's all built in. Ah, so that's how these work. There's a little, there's a connector down there. There we go. Ah, so that's how the the interfaces work. Yeah, so the little prototyping board can go in there. So that's your little prototyping board. So I think these are the GPIO pins. So they have male and then female. So these boards just pass through. And then I think this is probably the GPIO up here. But yeah, that's your, your little prototyping board. I guess I could actually slide that in here. Might as well put it in. Yeah, that just goes in like that. Just have to get the pins lined up to feel. Yeah, there you go. So you got a speaker and prototyping board in there. That's actually kind of neat, you know, if you want to add a little bit of circuitry to your system, or you could probably use USB, and if you have, were doing Arduino programming, you could plug your Arduino in there, set that up with power and ground, and your data connection and you could program your Arduino there. Yeah, I think this just make a nice little nice little multi-purpose platform. But yeah, I think that that's pretty sweet. You just have your keyboard slides out of the way. You can plug in some additional circuitry there and then fold it up and take it with you. It'll run off of batteries. You got got a nice screen, full-size keyboard. So yeah, there's your back panel. You've got your power, Ethernet, two ports, and then that's your charging power light. Air vents over there. But yeah, I think that's pretty nice. And it's not light, but I think it's it's fairly well built. I mean that's that's a really nice case and, and it's I think quite uh, quite usable. And having that uh, prototyping area inside or just area for plugging in extra hardware. I think that makes a pretty nice setup. So yeah, anyway, I give it a thumbs up so far. And yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and post up in the comment section below and I'll, I'll try to put some follow-up videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.